Hi, Charles is a Book Sage here with just a very quick intro to this Memories of Ice video. This was a Friday Reads I filmed right after finishing Memories of Ice um, at the time, like a year or so ago. And um, excuse the crappy camera angle, crappy focus, crappy lighting. I had just finished the book and just needed to get a camera turned on and record it. So I actually took this clip out of a f longer Friday Reads video and have reposted it here by itself just to include in this Malazan a discussion playlist. So enjoy. When I first started reading this and I was looking up things about Malazan, the common theme was books one and two are really good, but book three is gonna blow your mind. And uh, you go to Goodreads and it's five star, five star, best book in the series, one of the best fantasy books ever written, all that kind of stuff. So I went into this with a lot of expectations, a lot of hype. So the question is, does it live up to that hype? And I'm gonna say no. Um, it far exceeds, exceeds it. Yeah, it blows all that hype and then more. Now, I really liked Gardens of the Moon. thought it was a good entry. You know, has its issues, but first book in a massive, massive series. Solid first entry. There's a lot happening, a lot thrown at you. So it takes a little bit to kind of try to figure out what's going on and who's who. Dead House Gates. Uh, the first half of Dead House Gates I liked just as much as Gardens of the Moon. The second half of Dead House Gates the story leveled up a whole, like it went up a whole nother level. And I was like, all right, now this is now, this is starting to get really, really good. But Memories of Ice, my, my God, man. It's, I'm still like half in shock and reeling from this book. Before I was done with it, I was about halfway through. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna just dive right into House of Chains, the next book, as soon as I'm done here. And now it's like, no, I need, I need to stop and I need to take a break, and I need to process <laughs> what just happened in this book. I'm kind of like in mourning, almost, for some of these characters. It was, it was brutal and just devastating, but also poignant and funny, utterly shocking. This is a book you would expect at the finale of a series, not like early in the beginning of a series. This is only book three. I'm just almost speechless about this book. So, hands down, the best book in this series so far. And I would put this among the best epic fantasy books I've ever, I've ever read. To me, Memories of Ice could stand alongside any Wheel of Time book. Kind of like Storm of Swords, um, out of Song of Ice and Fire. Now, completely different epic fantasy from either one of those series. You would say more closer to Wheel of Time because there's magic and, you know, and wizards and all sorts of things. Still completely unique, very, very, very different from both of those series. You really can't, like, compare them other than as big, long epic fantasy. This one is a lot of, like, military fantasy because the whole, like, second half of the book, at least, it's a war and a war. <laughs> And you see, like, some of it's, like, you see stuff happening over there. And some of it's, like, down in the trenches, blow by blow, street corner by street by street, trying to stay alive. And, and again, the things that happen in this book are just, I was not expecting. Gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching stuff in this book. This is, yeah. <laughs> I can't, like, I'm still trying to process it. So I'm probably not going to read anything tonight. I just need to take a break and my mind needs to just absorb what I just read, what just happened. I'm really looking forward to continuing all the way. I almost want to open the ebook back up and go back and reread certain moments because they were just hit you with a sledgehammer when they happened and it was like just brutal and completely unexpected. And the book has Kruppa. Now, Kruppa was my favorite character from the first book. He's not in Dead House Gates, but he's back for this one. And Kruppa is just ceaseless entertainment. Kruppa is this short little round guy. He's kind of a merchant, sort of, from Darugistan. So he's a, he's a Daru, and nobody knows what to make of him. And he annoys everybody. And he just kind of pops up, and he inserts himself into things. And nobody really knows what he's doing and why he's there. The way he speaks is just, I could just sit back and listen to this guy talk all day, the way he talks. Imagine, take Mojo Jojo and drop 
someone who speaks like that in, into an epic fantasy story. Because he refers to himself in the third person all the time. And he just takes so long just to say the simplest of things. And it's all flowery and cropper and how wounded I am and all, all these just, it's just, again, it's just ceaseless entertainment. Every moment that guy's on the page, I just, I just eat it up. And there's a mystery to his character. We're getting hints of it, but I'm really, really curious to see where his story is going overall. This is not meant to be a book review of Memories of Ice, so I guess in a way it kind of is. I'm still kind of bowled over by just how good that book was and just how brutal and devastating it was. I might just listen to music for the most part tonight and just let Memories of Ice settle in and work its way through because, my God, man, that was a book.